Yes, lads, what's happening? What's happening? It's been a while. It's been a while. I made a video um, after two games into the season, actually, after the, the Man City defeat and then the just really poor performance from Brighton. And I made a video kind of saying... I wasn't saying like Pellegrini out at the time, but I was open to the fact, I think I'd listened to talks, but they're talking about Mourinho coming into different clubs and sort of putting himself about a little bit. And at the time then, after two games from what I've seen then and what I'd seen from the very, very poor pre-season we had and sort of tailing off to the end of last season, I was at the point where I was like, you know, Pellegrini is okay, but I would take Mourinho at the time. I then subsequently made a video a couple of weeks later during the international break where we'd sort of, Changed form a little bit. There was a few more draws. We beat uh, Man United, which again wasn't actually a great uh, performance, but I think it's a poor Man United sign. And then we beat Norwich. And, you know, I was feeling quite positive then. But, you know, when you actually look back now, Norwich are slap bang bottom of the league and they are they are dreadful. They are dreadful. We beat them. Great. And, you know, I think it was... Uh, yeah, uh, Watford got their first win against them. And Watford looked like Barcelona against Norwich. And so did we. So, you know, not really too great, not really too great. Yeah, Man United, poor again. And, uh, yeah, I had kind of switched then, and I thought, you know, we haven't played that great, but things are going to get better. But now, after this run that we've on and that performance against Burnley yesterday, Pellegrini, Pelle, Pellegr I can't talk, Pellegrini has lost the dressing room, clearly. There is something not right. And at this point now, I'm not on the fence anymore. You know, I was sick of his football even at the start of the season. But now I am officially, now is the time to call it a day with him. We've got an international break coming up, two weeks. If we get someone new in now, they've got two weeks with probably the majority of the squad because, let's face we don't have too many going out on international duty. Um, Snodgrass is retired, isn't he? Yeah, we've got Rice, but I don't, I'm pretty, you know, they'd have two weeks with the bulk of the squad so we can, you know, start building, start working on, like, actually, like, defending the suicide high line that we play does not work with the players that we've got. They're not. They're not good enough. They are not good enough. They need to play with the with the game in front of them, and that will stop conceding. You know, we'll stop conceding quite a few goals then, just from you know a tactical co coach that can come in and actually like get us defending properly, and hopefully actually getting us attacking properly as well. So the yeah, I mean, I sort of written a little few notes here because I was I ramble on a little bit I do ramble on anyway I am sorry for that but with Pellegrini the main reasons it's the poor slash the same tactics every game it doesn't matter who we're playing um, whether it be you know Burnley who are going to like sit deep and just ping long balls up or Man City that are going to just pin us back he picks the exact same the kind of 4-3-2-1 ish kind of formation and he's got loads of central attacking midfielders, you know, number 10s, which we've got far too many of in the squad. Haller up top on his own, super isolated. Um, yeah, the sort of the back line, just like squeeze up, try and catch people off on the uh, offside trap. It does not work. It hasn't worked. And I don't think we'll get relegated. If we don't get rid of Pellegrini, I do think we'll be okay because there are teams that are worse than us. And if he sets out that same way against everyone, it is going to work against some teams. So we're going to get some wins, you know, and that's kind of, you know, maybe, maybe isn't Man City, he had such good players, he could set out the exact same way and be like, right, no, this is it. It's 4-2-3-1. We're going to ticky tack it about, play the possession game and we will score. But West Ham, we don't have those players. Like, we just don't. We need to adapt. We need to adapt for every team that we're playing if we want to get results. You know, sometimes sometimes we are going to have to park the bus and hit, and hit people on the break, you know. Draw them forward. And we've, we've got a few pacey plays, so we can hit them on the break. And then that then rolls on to the next one. So it's the, the, poor, the poor and the same tactics every game. And I think part of the reason why that he's playing them poor, same tactics every game is down to the poor recruitment. And the recruitment sort of with the depth of squad that we've got, only really allows him to... I mean, it doesn't only allow him to, but from pretty much, when you look at the, uh, the depth of squad, you know, if he wants to, like, you know, pack, like, put three central midfielders in there that are, like, you know, strong, not particularly, like, the best on the ball, but, you know, like, just look kind of, like, bullish players, like, he doesn't have any of them. He's just bought... He's bought, like, just number 10s 
as far as fast wingers go as well. You know, we don't have... We've got Anderson, who is like a fast winger, but at the minute... He looks scared to actually run with the ball. I think in that Burnley game, he stood still on the edge of the box with the ball, just sort of jerking left, right, left, right, and then passed it backwards. I think with the right coaching, Anderson could, could become fantastic and could actually start taking people on again. So in my mind, as far as traditional fast wingers that are going to get out wide and run at people, we've got Antonio and we've got Anderson. Yarmolenko, he's more of an in, he wants to just cut inside and shoot. Snodgrass, he's not quick enough. Lanzini is not really really quick enough to like be that so you know to the poor recruitment we've bought no fast wingers we've loaned one of them out to um uh, to West Brom which I would definitely be recalling in January and then and then central midfield we've got Noble who's pretty much nailed on in the squad which he doesn't seem to play that well he always plays best when he's been dropped for someone else like coming in and then you know like we'll, we'll probably lose a few games Noble will be back in the team and he's like fucking, you know, like prime Perlo, pinging balls around. So there's no there's no competition in space. And you've got Declan Rice as well, who has been fantastic. But, you know, over the last few games, he's sort of been looking like uh, a central, like a, a central defender that's been plopped in midfield, putting in some tackles and just looking a little bit lost, to be honest with you. It's quite sad. Um, yes, yeah, so we've got that... Um, and uh, yeah, like lack of personality as well. And I know that's like a bit of a stupid thing, but you know, when you have like some managers, you know, like we've had like like you know Billich and you know even Moyes a little bit gave you a little bit of something. When you've been on the end of like a three 0 defeat and you have got a manager that's going to come out and at least you get you get nothing from Pellegrini. He's just like this dead eyed stone wall old codger who. It was, yes, and you, you know, and you're just watching it and, it and it just makes you even more angry. At least, you know, you get a manager with a bit of personality. You kind of watch it and think, oh, maybe there's a little bit of hope there. Like maybe next week something's going to happen in training. But like, look at Pellegrini and you can just see like he's not he's not going to get you up for a fight. Like he's just not going to do it. And the other one is just boring football as well. It's been boring. I'm not seeing any great attacking stylish football. It's possession. It's possession football. I think yesterday we actually had the more possession stats. But we are not doing anything with it. We're just passing the ball side to side, backwards and front. And it's so slow and painful to watch. We can't carve out any chances because teams are aware to it. Like They're all sitting back deep. You know, we don't have like the most amazing players to like cut, you know, like that De Bruyne will like City do it all the time. Teams are completely part of the bus and they're side to side. But they have that little bit of magic, you know, that one ball, like, you know, just like pinpoint pass and boom, they're scored. And then it's 1-0 and then the game completely changes. Whereas at the minute, that is like, that is just not happening to us. So that is very much my stance on it. And that won't be changing now till he goes. Uh, Pellegrini, your time is up, mate. Your time is up. And as far as jobs, I printed this, um, I printed this T-shirt specially. Uh, I'm sure none of you know, but... When I was younger, I got into West Ham because of my uncles, because I used to sort of spend a bit more time with them, and they'd take me up to Park and that, and we'd yeah, and we'd watch games. Um, but my dad, I didn't really like. He was around, but yeah, I didn't really sort of do much of it. So my dad's actually a Chelsea fan. But then when I was a little bit older, I ended up like moving moving in with him, and uh, yeah, like he like he loved Mourinho. It was the time that they were um, you know like killing it, like winning the Champions League and stuff like that. Um, or was it the Premier League? I don't know. Do you think they won it? Uh, won the Champions League? I can't even remember. But he loved Mourinho. I like him. He's got personality. He's got arrogance. You know, he's a bit of a git. He's a bit of a bastard. The football is not always going to be the most entertaining, but this isn't entertaining. If he would come to West Ham, I would pay Pellegrini off now. Get him in. I mean, uh, is he going to want to come? Possibly. We, we would be lucky to have someone of that quality and of that pedigree as well because he will like you know he just sets he sets teams up well and I'm from what I'm hearing Pellegrini is is not even really looking into like who he's playing he's just he's just setting up it setting us up in a certain way um and hoping that we get the results and and that and that is not going to work so yeah I would definitely I would be banging on I'd give Mourinho whatever he wants 15 million quid to pay off Pellegrini just get it done Get uh, get uh, get Mourinho in, or you know, there's plenty of other managers around there. But obviously, he's taking on someone a little bit younger. 
and playing a bit of risk on it, I would, I would be more than happy with that as well. I would be more than happy with that. But like, you know, if we just want to, if we want to save our season and sort of crack forward and we might get two years with him and we've got two weeks coming up as well so we can, you know, get us drilled, get us defending properly in the next two weeks and then we've got January coming as well which is only around the corner and then a few key signings which, you know, could be some pace, definitely pace is needed and some steel in the midfield, you know, some someone with some real fight. I know how Mourinho likes setting up his teams. He often plays like the sort of four, three, three, and he'll have three central midfielders, which, you know, there might be one of them that drifts forward a little bit, but pretty much he's going to want, I mean, you'll probably see, no, you're not going to be very happy with it, but in the short term, you'll probably see the return of like Carlos Sanchez coming back into midfield, I would imagine. And he might be setting us up with like Rice, Carlos Sanchez and Noble. So it's, it's not going to be great. But like in, in the short term, I don't know who else is in the squad. There could be someone in the, um, you know, in the academy that he could bring in there. But he likes tall, strong players that are going to work hard. They're going to do what they're told, you know, because he's a tactical genius. Like, you know, he, he doesn't have all the possession. But you know, he always says, like, oh, the most dangerous time is when you don't have the ball and that. And he will draw people onto you. And if we can be solid enough and we've got the pace of, say, Anderson um, and Antonio out on the wings, maybe Dean Garner if he um, calls him back in January as well. And we've got Haller up top. He, like, he would love Haller, you know, it's like your kind of Drogba man up top. And we can hit people on pace with the counter-attack. That is going to be the best way to get the most out of the squad, in, in, in my opinion. And, but, you know, it could go tits up, whatever. The board probably aren't going to sack him. But this is my thoughts. I thank you very much for watching. Be kind in the comments because I got absolutely ripped last time. Um, yeah, so, but yeah, who cares? Peace.